Uh, why don't we bring the meeting to order for the Johnson Health Board? And Brian, why don't you uh, fill the board in on what we have for an issue here? Okay. So uh, this is dealing with 92 Sunset, uh, which is a home owned by um, by Willie Noyes. Um, let's see, and the tenant's name. Willie, can you remind me of the tenant's name? Jordan Benoit. Jordan Benoit. Uh, so the home I uh, had, <laughs> There's kind of a few issues with the home, but as it pertains to us, uh, we were called and asked to do a health inspection uh, on, let's see, the date on uh, 9-4, so two weeks, two Fridays ago. We were asked to do a, a health inspection of the property. At the same time, a, an inspection by electrical safety and fire safety was being done um, simultaneously. Uh, Tracy went out with everybody. Uh, the, the resident was not there, but the home, the property owner was. Uh, they did inspect the property, found a number of issues. Um, attached in your packet is both the um, health officers report and also the report of for fire and electrical inspectors because uh, they really kind of rely on each other. Um, at the kind of in, in doing the report Tracy found that there was a number of serious and immediate concerns with uh, especially uh, water and heat and thought it was important to issue an emergency health order uh, that the, the, you know, that the, the property needs immediate corrective action in order to be safe and habitable. Um, she delivered that order. Uh, then we have attempted to make arrangements to have this hearing so the board can review Tracy's health order. Okay. Make it a permanent? Yes. Okay. Uh, and does Tracy want to add anything? I see she's on the phone tonight. Yeah, Tracy, uh, if you're on a, uh, an iPhone, uh, I'm not sure how to unmute from that uh, if you're not dialed in. There can you hear me now? Yes, we yes. can. Okay, great. Um, so, you, did Brian was, did everybody get the pictures and everything too with the report, my written report, the regular report and the other report? Yes. No, we did. Is it in your report? It's in your board packet. Okay. Uh, awesome. The pictures start on page 18. Yeah, this is a pretty lengthy little report. Sorry. I just want to cover all my bases. Has she been sworn in or should she? Uh, uh, should, she should be. Yeah. Okay, and typically the board would have to be sworn in as well, I believe. I think everyone in the meeting should be. Is that true? And anybody who's going to testify. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you have the, uh, the swear in form or Rosemary typically one of us? Rosemary usually has that language. Uh, I can. I know she's on. Be able to help you. He's an attorney. He might. Have the, language. the typical language is, do you affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth under pain of perjury? Does, does that I'm work a, for all of you? I'm a notary, so I can administer okay. the oath if that would be helpful to you. Then why don't we uh, have all board members raise your right hand? And anyone else that's going to testify with that too, Eric, or no? 
Well, uh, typically I just swear in anyone after we're sworn in. Okay. All right. I think <clears throat> do you uh, hereby affirm that the testimony you are about to give is true, complete, and accurate under pains of and penalties of perjury? I do. And that you are muted if you weren't aware. I do. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't think I've ever met Carl Lissman before. He's the attorney for the owner um, who's Willie Noyes, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye, Carl. So, Brian, you've already uh, given us a rundown of what was behind this. So I would... Want me to swear in? I guess you probably should. Uh, right. I would certainly request Tracy to swear in. Yeah. And whoever else on this call would be uh, anticipating giving any testimony or uh, evidence or submission. So I imagine that would probably be John and Willie. Right. Both uh, John and I Willie. Will also be speaking. And, and possibly Carl. No. Okay. Carl okay. makes argument. Carl doesn't give testimony. He, he's not reliable. <laughs> <laughs> so would you please you raise your right you? hand. Yeah. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, enough of the truth to help you, God. Yes, I do. Okay, thank you all. Uh, back to you, Tracy. Uh, like I said, Brian gave us a little bit of a rundown on why we're here, what it led to this. Uh, looking for your testimony, you did an inspection. Can I, can I jump in here? Yes, go ahead, Matt. Uh, Willie Noyes, hi, I haven't met you either. And Jay Black is, I'm sorry, who? John Black. He's My name is John Black. I'm the Chief Electrical Inspector for the state of Vermont. Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you. And I performed the electrical inspection at that property. Okay. Thank you. Along with the fire marshal, Sean Udell. Welcome. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. Go ahead, Tracy. Uh, you're on mute again, Tracy. All right. Am I back? Yep. Yes. We can hear you now. Okay. I'm, I mean, basically my main concern why I had felt the need for this was no heat, no, no hot water. Um, and they have no way of getting that. Um, you can see in one of the pictures that they literally took the um, electric meter out and they've been just using a generator and uh, small uh, propane tanks to heat things. Uh, the only other source of heat I saw was the pro, uh, pellet stove on a porch, on a porch, quote unquote, bedroom that had no piping leading out. And it was in close proximity to the walls with no, no barrier between the walls and the pellet stove. And uh, the only way their pump runs is by electricity. So if, because, you know, they're not allowed to use the generator, they have no water, no heat. Uh, no electricity, no anything really, but they still are using the generator as far as I know. We saw two that were burnt out from previous use and one brand new one that it looked like they were dragging across the lawn. And then uh, Mr. Black found the cords and stuff like that that they use for it. So I don't see how this place is inhabitable at all. Um, without proper sewage, water, heat, especially now the temperatures are getting low. I mean, now potentially pipes are freezing and whatnot, so. Okay, Tracy, uh, I did scan down through looking at the pictures as you were speaking to them. Uh, I would certainly uh, affirm what you've just testified with. Willie, you are probably aware that uh, we cannot issue orders against the tenant. It will be against the, the property owner, correct? And you are the owner, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, May I add some things? Yes, and, go ahead, please. And, and correct a couple of things. The power was shut off December 3rd, two years ago. It was shut off by the co-op for non-payment. The someone... I don't know who, 
I suspect it was probably the tenant, but I can't prove that. Plus, they came and finally got the meter out and someone plugged another meter in from another electric company to run power until the power company came and investigated and found that meter and had a sheriff go over and pull that meter out. So that's why I didn't have anything to do with the power being shut off. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the deficiencies that she has stated are because there is no power in the house. And uh, I signed a lease, a month to month lease in my March 1st, 2017. And I have not received a penny of rent since May of 2017, almost $40,000. I've asked these people to leave. I've done, you know, there's nothing I can do to help the situation. Uh, Mr. Black stated that the cord that they ran for the generator is illegal because there's no disconnect and they cannot put a disconnect and alter the electrical system without my permission. Well, I'm not going to give permission to do that because I don't want a generator running in my backyard because every two weeks I hear about it from the neighbor that this generator is running. Um, I just want to clarify why the meter's not there. Okay. I have nothing to do with that. They had to end, end up disconnecting out at the transclosure at the road so the people would not jerry rig and steal power again. Um, the deficiencies will not be corrected. I don't expect to rent the house ever again. As soon as the tenants vacate, the house is going up for sale and I will do the repairs necessary to sell it. It will not be a rental house ever again. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, a question you you state that it's been like two years since you got payment of any sort. Were yes. you in the process of an eviction? I I was planning to do that this, this spring, but then the no eviction process uh, rules went into effect, so I yes. couldn't do it. Uh, okay, I must, I must commend your health officer. She did a awesome job with with her report uh, other uh, health officers could probably take some lessons from her thank you okay. thank you Tracy I'll open it up the board members anybody has any questions yeah if I might I might I want to ask Tracy if the pictures that uh, we have uh, accurately reflect what, what she observed on, on the premises. Yes, those are the pictures I took that day um, on my phone, and that's why I put little descriptions with them all also. And my, my, my question really is that those pictures which you took are accurate and reflect the condition of the premises. Yes. Thank you. And may I state for the record that there were no holes punched in the wall when I rented them the house. And all those holes that were there, everything was fixed up for them to live in when they moved in. And all those holes have been put on in there since they've been there. Pat, do you have any questions? I do not. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the last time we had a health board hearing, but I would believe that uh, we would need to have findings of fact and issue an order one way or the other, affirming what the, our health officer has come up with. There probably is the opportunity to go into deliberations like we do for other uh, board hearings, but it's the board's, up to the board's pleasure you feel you need to hear more evidence or if there's any more to be presented either from uh, Willie or, or Carl or, or uh, Jay. And if not, I guess I would look for some direction from the board. Do you want to go into deliberation or is the board prepared to act? I would prefer to go into deliberation. Okay. Mr. Chair, do you want to hear from Mr. Black? Yes, I would. If you if you got some more, uh, you know, testimony provide that backs up uh, Tracy's 
Definitely. Go ahead and talk now. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, my, re my report is pretty clear um, in that it, the electrical, the, the method of the electrical hookup that this guy has done is illegal. He is back feeding his panel. There is no transfer switch whatsoever. It's just a cord coming out of the panel plugged into the generator. Um, it does pose a hazard to anyone working on the electric system outside of the building, i.e. the meter reader, if they want to put in a meter or work on that cabinet. Um, other than that, I don't know what you'd want from me. The condition of the house is poor. I did take quite a few pictures myself. There was uh, obviously a couple of <clears throat> generators, which I, I maybe I did mention in my report, that uh, were behind the house that either burned out or um, functional. Um, if that is the case, it does pose a hazard <clears throat> while that generator is running. If there's a low voltage situation in the house, that uh, the heating plant or some other electrical device could malfunction and cause a fire in that house. There were absolutely no working smoke or CO detectors in the house. Uh, arrive. Uh, I provided a copy as best I could to the tenant and called him several occasions to remind him that he had a deadline of 24 hours to add smoke detectors, battery operated ones would be sufficient and to correct the electric conditions as noted in my report. May, I, may, may I add one more thing? The, uh, the hot water heater is run by uh, propane and it is being run off a gas grill tank, which is a lot lower pressure than what you normally do. And that creates a serious fire hazard. I've had someone, another tenant do the same thing and it almost burned my house down. Willie is absolutely correct. That's a violation of uh, an FPA 58. The gas code, the pressures required to run those appliances cannot be obtained from a 20 pound cylinder versus a two tank, which what should be there. And obviously he hasn't paid propane bills either or else that wouldn't be that way. Uh, John, is the note about the low pressure propane, uh, is that in your, in your or uh, Shane Goodell's report? Uh, it's in my report that the generator was being, oh, pardon me, the propane was being run by a small tank. Um, we do have other people in our office that are uh, certified gas installers. I'm not qualified, but I'm an electrician. Uh, I do know from past experience dealing with items like this that a low pressure situation is uh, a definite hazard. Okay. There's also a picture of the tank they're using. I normally don't include items that I don't have expertise in. In my report, I might mention them, but I don't quote code when it comes to that. Thank you. Any further board questions? I'm, I'm curious if, uh, if this tenant made peace and settled up with the co-op and they put the meter back in, would that alleviate the electrical problems? Other than yeah, that? Yes. He, he would have to disconnect the hookup that he's got for his generator. That in itself poses a hazard if the power source from outside the building were to be reintroduced. Is it, he has that connected into his control panel? or It's connected into his main panel, sir, okay. inside the building. Okay. And he is using, oh, I would estimate 125 feet of flexible SO cord to plug in his generator, which is sitting in a little shack right next to his chickens out back. Mm -hmm. Any further the test, questions? The um, document with the pictures show there's a basement bedroom with no second accessible egress. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's uh, correct. You need a 5.7 square foot egress window in every bedroom, and uh, in addition to a door leading out. Those bedrooms do not have anywhere near uh, an egress window. They're quite small, and I doubt that anybody would be able to get out of that bedroom if there was a fire in the hallway. Thank you. Any further questions? If not, I would entertain a motion to go in deliberations, inviting Brian. If what, you you want to do that, Eric. If we can, if we're ready to wrap it up, go ahead, Brian. I was say if I can offer a suggestion, uh, we do have a. Uh, uh, executive session scheduled for the end of our meeting uh, and given the kind of difficulty of doing executive session uh, during a meeting uh, electronically it might make sense to do them both at the same time at the end of the meeting okay if the board if that's the board's pleasure we can uh, uh, recess this health board meeting and then reconvene at about the same time we enter into executive session for the select board. Attorney Listman had indicated he wasn't going to testify, but he, his, our, his job was to argue. We're not going to hear anything. You're on mute. I appreciate that, Doug, but I don't know that I could add anything more in argument than what you've heard factually. This is a disaster. It's not often that a landlord wants to have his building condemned as a health hazard, but it seems to be the only way to ensure that this health hazard uh, is resolved. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further questions or testimony, is the board prepared to uh, recess this health board meeting? I move we recess it since it's actually about seven minutes before our next meeting and uh, enter into a deliberation se uh, session later here. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And I would expect the board will have some findings and issue a written response within seven days. And the, in this case, Mike is not a deliberative person, as I right. remember. Right. Okay. So the record Thanks would show. Your time. Yep, thank you. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Our health board meeting is, is uh, recess. Uh, so let's bring the meeting to order of the select board. Uh, mm -hmm. Before I get into the agenda. I just want to state that uh, I think I've been doing a poor job of these Zoom meetings. I think uh, meetings have been getting a little bit out of hand. We're going on to 1130 at night. So a few changes that I'm going to put in place as the chair prerogative, and obviously the board can overrule me, is there'll be no chat rooms open. Um, if you've noticed that Brian's report has got times for each agenda item, and I'm gonna be a real stickler to try to stick to those times and keep us on track. If we get to on an item and we're over time, I'll remind the board, and if the board's wishes are to continue, then we will. When we get to 10 o'clock, I will ask what items are left that are must-dos, and for the board to select those and there may be some items we do not get completed in the, in the, the night and should be out of here by 1030. That's my plan. <clears throat> um, if any hackers come in and zoom bomb us like Brian had the experience, I will immediately adjourn the meeting and Brian will shut the meeting down and we will reconvene at a later time and we will figure out firewalls to prevent the bombers from coming in. But those are my uh, meeting rules. 
And I guess I would open up the board before I go into the agenda. Is that acceptable to the board or do you prefer any changes? Fine with me, Mr. Chairman. Kyle, Nat? Yeah. Yep. Um, so, um, Eric, what's what's your plan for, for public comment then? How would that work? Just like we were, if we were in person, they, they're able to be recognized and then they can speak just normal fashion, just without uh, being able to chat during our normal time. And so they would, what, use the raised hand icon? Yeah, I would look to Brian to, as he has in the in most of our meetings, uh, to recognize those that have got their hands raised from the audience. Okay. I just want to make sure that the audience, because they're so used to being able to chat, so just so that they're clear yeah. on how that's going to work. Okay. Is there any uh, changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Uh, I do have two changes. Okay. Or additions, I guess. Uh, we said that we were going to select the voting member for the VLCT annual meeting. Uh, okay. And uh, in addition to a request from the Historical Society, uh, the Conservation Commission has a request uh, that's a little similar, so probably worth taking up at, a, at the same time. Okay. Anyone else? Doug? Doug? Um, I would like to bring up the subject of recognizing the services of Ray and of Brian Crosey, who We've accepted their resignations, but I think that uh, they both have done long-term yeoman work or spectacular jobs, and I think that we need to somehow indicate that appreciation. Yep. Anyone else? Okay. And just the note that we are, we did uh, recess the Board of Health meeting for deliberations that would be at about the same time as uh, either before or after the select board executive session. So we'll schedule that for the end of the meeting. Okay, if there's no further changes or additions, is the board prepared to review the meeting minutes approval for August 24th and September 8th. I had a change that I'd requested for September 8th. Um, I, <clears throat> I can try and find it, uh, what I sent. Um, towards the end, it says Nat said the select board voted to raise the flag twice previous to Rick asking them to take a vote on it again taking the same vote over and over again won't change things. I just wanted the record to be clear on that, that I did acknowledge at the time that um, the vote failed in, in both times. It, it says that we voted to raise the flag. We actually voted on it. I did say vote to it, but I also said that it failed. I think the record should be clear that um, it failed even though it's in previous. So do you have some kind of preferred language for what you were quoted? <clears throat> what I suggested was uh, instead of what is there, I, I suggested Nat said the select board voted on raising the flag twice. Nat said he supported it twice and unfortunately that failed, but voting on the same thing over and over again is not productive. That would be my proposed language. And what did you actually say? That. Okay. And and you had shared this with Donna? I shared this with Donna and the board. Okay. Was that for September 8th or August 24th? Uh, September 8th. Okay. Okay, so we have one change suggested in the meeting minutes for September 8th. What's the board's pleasures on these? I have another suggestion. Okay, go ahead. On page six, after you had indicated uh, that you didn't understand, meaning she, meaning Kyle, where she was coming from, there's an omission in what the next statement was. Okay. 
Okay. And I would, you know, ask uh, Donna to examine the the record and, and put, put in whatever was said. You seem to have a memory of it. What was it? But... <laughs> it okay. was something along the line of, of course not, um, uh, being a white male in the dominant culture, but that's not an exact quote. And Mike, I saw your hand go up. Why don't we get these things ironed out uh, for the 8th of September and just vote on the August one? So you're suggesting we split the two? Yes. Okay. I guess I would entertain a motion if if October if August 24th there are no suggested changing changes and it could be easily approved. I would entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes for August 21st or fourth first, and then we'll come back to September 8th. So move, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Motion is second. Is there any discussion on August 24th meeting minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. And I've come back to September 8th. What's the board's pleasure? I'm prepared to make a motion with suggested changes. I would like Donna to look at the record and rather than going from my my recollection, because I think it, this is something that uh, you know ought to be in the record because it was said. Um, and any action there, so so I I don't want to suggest anything, but it be the the actual language. You know, Matt has his actual language, but this I think you know if Donna could look and put it in, I would suggest that. That sounds reasonable, Mr. Chairman. I guess I would look for the full board's pleasure on that because we would not be approving the meeting minutes tonight. Okay. No big deal. Okay. Then, Rosemary, you got the floor. Okay. Um, do you want to start with the budget status report? Sure. On the last year's, I think it's probably 99% um, complete. And looks like there is a difference of $113,303 between revenue and expenses. And I'm still working on the cash on hand piece of it. Um, I should have that ready for your next meeting. And we can, um, I wanna make sure that all I have for cash on hand has been accounted for. Okay. There's more than that cash on hand. I wanna make sure it's all put in the right place. Can I ask a question? I, I sure. When these things come out so late in the day, I don't have any opportunity to, to see them given my access. Um, and so I'm, I'm just assuming that's positive, 113,000? Yes. Okay, all right. And I sent the report for delinquent taxes and current taxes. Of course, the first installment is not due until next Wednesday. To date, we're at 27.22% collected for the year. And people are starting to pay, but they lose your weight to the very last day. Mm -hmm. And I have a special event permit from Green Mountain Distilleries. They are holding an event at Moog's on October 1st. What's the board's pleasure? You're just looking for our approval, right? And then you sign it? Yes. What's the board's pleasure? Why do they need our approval? Don't they have a liquor license? This is like a catering permit. They need permission from the um, local liquor control board first. But they have a permit to serve. I, I don't understand. 
it's some special event from reading it uh, and it they're going to be a complimentary drink of some sort if i read that correct me, yes 12 ounce drink yeah oh because they're giving away liquor yes i i suspect that it's also has to do with uh the license that they have as a producer is not the same as the license that they would need to serve. And so this is a special event where they're going to be serving. So I, I think that they need a temporary additional license. We had something similar uh, a couple of years ago, I believe, when uh, the alchemist was working with the Lamoille Housing Partnership for the Lamoille Housing Partnership's annual meeting. And the alchemist was providing, you know, drinks for their annual dinner. Uh, I believe they needed a special permit also. It's fairly routine. Mike? The alchemist just gave out one, one beer, right? It was a couple of years ago. I'm, I don't remember. I just have a little concern about how strong that drink is. And if, you know, I would hate to have somebody get kind of wound up on one drink and have a, another one and have something happen. But, you know, the rest of the board can probably make a decision on that. What are the hours of this event? From five to nine. And okay, and it's and there's food being served, and it's like a dinner thing. Yes. And it's outside, Rosemary. Um, yes, outside in their dining outside dining area. Um, I'm I'm comfortable with approving. Are you so moving? I'm so moving. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. No. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Doug, how do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Nay. Kyle, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Nat, how do you vote? No. And the chair votes in favor. Motion passes. Rosemary, go ahead. I still have some errors and omissions for the uh, grand list for 2020. On the village portion, Robert Sweetser was missing for a change of 152,400. And the there was a town of Johnson for the um, industrial park was on the village grand list, which should not have been there. And that was 1,900. And on the town side of it, um, Richard Bador um, was missing his veterans exemption of $40,000. And on the Village Water and Light, there was an error on their inventory. It was 1,304,000 and it went down to 671,000. Okay, so this that, requires a vote of the board to accept? Yes. What's the board's pleasure? Entertain a motion to accept the errors and omissions from the Don't move. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any more discussion? So this has been looked at, obviously looked at and vetted, and this this is this is the accurate information. Mary? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These are the figures that Robin has given me. Okay. 
Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. And the um, elections from the Secretary of State's office is giving the town $1,000 for a drop box for the ballots. And I have ordered one and it should be here by the end of the week. And I guess um, the highway department is going to um, build a um, cement pad to place it on. And ballots should be starting to be mailed out this week from the state. What's this like a, uh, a mailbox type of drop box? Yes. Okay. Where is it going to be um, placed, Rosemary? I think right beside the um, parking lot, right beside the sidewalk in the parking lot, either on the right hand side or left hand side. And then it'll go away after the election? No, I think it might be, we might make it our permanent drop box. Okay. So if that becomes a permanent drop box, then obviously someone's going to have to be checking it daily. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you would do away with the, uh, the small one that we have? Well, we'll probably keep it there because it's built inside the building. Yeah. Okay. And what they gave you is enough money? It will pay for the box and the shipping charges. <laughs> it's an expensive box. Um, if you drive by um, Morseville, they got theirs right out inside of their building, right on the sidewalk. Okay. They ordered one before they know they're going to get reimbursed for one because they had a very, very small drop box and what fit the ballots. It, was it retroactive for them? I believe so, because they, they met oh. all the requirements. It would have been pretty sore if it wasn't. Well, they needed it. What, either, what, anyway. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> they can afford $1,000. <laughs> yeah, they're going to put a camera on there, too. Oh, really? Yeah. That's yes. a good idea. Yeah. I don't know what I think about putting your drop box out or ballots in this important election or any election out along the street, driveway someplace. You know, is there is there a better place that you could think of for that? We can look at uh, placing it closer to the front door. Uh, there's a light that I think is gonna be in the way and our, I'm not sure our bulletin board might also be in the way. How about inside the lobby? I don't know that we... That's not 24-hour access. Yeah. Right. How big is the receptacle for our, our own drop box that we already have? Is there any way to increase the capacity of that? No. Okay. Unless you open up and have them drop on the floor. There's no way that we could build some kind of cage around that to, so it wouldn't be exposed to the floor and just catch them there. If we've got a thousand dollars to, does it have to be a thousand dollars spent on this particular box or can we retrofit the one we already have? I would not recommend retrofitting it. But that's far more secure than having a drop box outside. Well, this is, go it's going to be um, cemented in or um, attached by screws on to the, to the sidewalk. Right, but still. Is it fireproof if you drop something in? No, but the one we have down wasn't. True. But it's, it's more of a target if you have something standing alone than you do 
if you have something attached to a building, I would think. Is this particular Dropbox recommended by the Secretary of State or the state or something, Rosemary? How? Yes, it is. Okay. I would like to look into retrofitting the one we have myself. Sort of running out of run, runway here. What, our time is almost done up for this thing? Well, uh, if we came back to this next month. Okay, I get you. Yeah. I, yeah, I think Rosemary's sort of looking for a yay or nay tonight. Right, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm personally comfortable with having a freestanding box that's really accessible to, to folks. I'm not personally feeling worried about vandalism. I, I, it sounds like it's going to be really secure and I'm sure it's, it's going to be pretty, very sturdy. Yeah, I, I agree with that. The fact that it's been uh, vetted by the at the state level, not needing to redesign it. I don't think that there's anything. Uh, I think that our current solution, our current Dropbox, is vulnerable to pretty much the same things that this one is of, you know, for vandalism and whatever else. Um, I think it's reasonably secure. It'll be more convenient, and it will uh, it will have the security of larger capacity uh, that our current one does not have. So if we if we do get a lot of ballots, um, we could have we could pretty easily have trouble with our current solution. So yeah, I, I really recommend going with Rosemary's proposal. I th yeah, I think that should be having enough capacity should be more of the focus than a, a theoretical whatever people are thinking might happen. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, Rosemary, what else you got? Uh, just the warrant for the board to approve Eric to sign them. What's the board's pleasure? So move. We have a motion authorizing the chair to sign the warrants. Do we have a second? Second. The motion is second. Any more discussion? I'm going to abstain because I really haven't had time to review that. So noted. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, okay. I'll don't, be in probably tomorrow, Rosemary, and sign them. I don't mean to be a nuisance, but if I abstain, does it need a, need a roll call? Mm, I think the rest of the board was... We're all unanimous. <laughs> the, as I understand the rule, it's for any non-unanimous vote. Uh, so I guess to be on the safe side, we, we probably should. Okay, Doug, how do you vote? And you're abstaining. I'm abstaining. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Kyle, how do you vote? Aye. Nat, how do you vote? Aye. And the ayes have it. Anything else, Rosemary? Um, we're just wait, awaiting the paperwork for the land records grant agreement to be signed. We should receive that this week, I would, I would hope. That we got about twenty five thousand in grant funds. Good. And that's it. That's it. Anybody have any questions for Rosemary? Thanks for getting that grant, Rosemary. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. It'll be be good to the, have the records go back to the late nineteen sixties. Awesome. Okay. Attorneys probably use that a lot, don't they? Yes, they do. It'd be easier for them. They won't charge as much. Yeah. I'm wondering, if it, will this benefit you in terms of time in the office, or, or do you think you'll lose money on, on, on not having the 
the four dollars an hour plus copy. Well, it's supposed to be uh, three dollars per page when you print something, and we're supposed to get a dollar and a half of that instead of getting a dollar. So that will make up for some of it. Okay. Thank you, Rosemary. You're welcome. We got Brian Krause on tonight. Yep. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Go ahead. So first, I wanted to apologize. I'm on a different computer, and I haven't been able to figure out how to get the, the camera working. So it wasn't my intention not to have a picture. Um, with that said, I had a few things to discuss. Um, one of them was Basin Road. I know there was a lot of concern about getting Basin Road opened up again. Um, that is taken care of. We fixed the washout that was caused by the storm. And that should be, that's all we're doing there, that we took care of that washout storm related and then we're done there. And then the UVM project on Clay Hill, I do have a firm date that is going to start the 28th. And it'll probably be take two days to complete. I did box out a third day. So when Brian's notifying people that it's gonna be closed, I had them do three days just in case they have problems or we have weather issues or something like that. Brian, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Um, and then we were gonna talk about the HV 507, which I presented last month, the single axle plow truck. That's actually in Brian's report, first item. So why don't you go ahead and finish up your report and then when we go into uh, Brian's story report, that's the first item. Okay, and then in Brian's report is the HV613 and the HX620 in that same report? Yep. <clears throat> okay, then other than that, um, I'm pretty much set. Anybody got any questions for Brian? Matt on that? Yeah, I sent uh... Brian and Brian, uh, pictures of uh, 100C today, where there's a, the road is eroding underneath the house on the corner of 100C and um, School Street. And I'm just wondering if you've heard from the state on what their plan is there? I have not. It looks no, like- They haven't shared that with us. We have informed them of the road conditions in that area, uh, but they have not. They have not informed us what their response is. They put a couple of orange barrels out there. I, I assume it's the state, um, but it, it looks like a real hazard. I mean, it's it's eroded past the white line, um, and the road's just slipping right under into the basement of that house. So I, it's I don't know. Anyway. Is it Nat? Are you talking about the? Um... Do you look who yours house, the one that's been taped off? Yes. 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 The one by the powerhouse bridge. Okay. Matt, you're asking a question about the, um, the state and the highway. We were going to approach it from our, our ordinance, you know, I, I believe. I'm sorry. And that one's Mike? very high on our list for the dilapidated building ordinance, yes. Mike? It's my understanding that the Lahuyas are talking to the state on this already, and there it's going to be some uh, resolution, I believe, very soon on it. Well, what, did you know something from talking to the Lahuyas, Mike? Yes. <clears throat> okay, good to know. Yeah. So, Brian, sorry, has there been any contact with the... Uh... Was the Lahuliers on this from our point of view? Not too recently. Uh, but I think that we, I'll, I'll circle back with uh, uh, Gil and see if he's got news from the state. And uh, like I said, it is also high on our interest for our dilapidated buildings. 
I guess my question is, you know, after you decided that we were going to contact them, did the contact happen or, or it's, you know, I understand all the work, but is it high on our list or has it, the contact been made? I believe that we made the first round of contact, which was, you know, kind of letting him know that we were interested in this and sending him a copy of our uh, dilapidated building ordinance. Okay, thank you. Eric? Yes, Mike. I got a question for uh, Brian Krause. Uh, Brian, you still yeah. there? Yep. You talked about an HV613. We have a package here for an HX620 and an HV507. The HV... We... Well, we're we're going to circle back into the trucks uh, in a little bit, Mike, if that's okay. Okay. It's the very the, first thing in Brian's stories report. Right. But I guess I didn't understand where the HV613 came from, as we talked about that earlier today, Brian, story. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Got it. I understand. Any further questions for Brian Krause? Yes, Scott, we have a uh, member of the public who has a question. Um, well, it's not typically when we take public comment. What's the board's pleasure? Let Scott speak. Okay. And just so you're aware of our timing, <laughs> I'm already failing and we're at 734 and we haven't even got through Brian Krause's report, but go ahead, Scott. You probably have. Okay. Yeah. Thanks um, for hearing me out on the Clay Hill project to, um, one of the culverts being replaced is right in the center of our property where Checkerberry Creek takes the bend in the road. And Kim and I both, we don't have a clue, like the scope of work. Nobody's bothered to let us know. UVM has been really kind saying there's going to be work done, but we don't have any idea what or who um, is going to do so, what it's going to be like. It would be nice to be informed. Thanks. So there is a culvert, and, and I'm not sure how far your property goes. There's a culvert fairly close to your house. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, it's right below our house, but our property goes down quite a ways. A lot of people don't know that. The assessors do, but a lot of other people don't. So if the one by your house, the one closest to your house is a control culvert. So UVM will come and take pictures of the outlet and probably the inlet, and they're going to monitor that, but there will be no excavation. There's going to be nothing done with that culvert. The one that's getting replaced and upsized is the next one down the hill. And you'll see on that, on your side of the road, you'll see a new head wall and a bigger culvert. Um, but that's really all that's being changed. We're, we're swapping that culvert out, we're replacing it with a, an upsized culvert and we're going to build a, you know, a stone head wall, if you will, for the culvert. And on the opposite side, the outlet side, you're going to see a more complete armoring or rip wrapping down to the bottom of that valley where the water is, where the, the creek flows. Okay. It, it would be nice because there's quite a few culvert crossings and there's two right by the house and I'm not really clear. I know UVM has been taking a lot of photos of the one just below the house. If it would, if it would help you out, I could meet you there and show you which one we're talking about. Yeah, that, that would be really kind and appreciated. Thanks. Okay. If you give me a buzz tomorrow, we can set up a time. You bet. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Any further questions for Brian? If not, thank you, Brian. And I'm, Anticipate you're going to stick around for a little while? Yes. Okay. Uh, Johnson Rec report. And I think we got this from uh, Lisa in our email. Yes. Hello. Hello, Lisa. Am I, Brian, am I giving? A synopsis, or are we just doing questions tonight? Uh, I 
maybe a, a very quick synopsis, um, you know, just so the public has got an idea, but. Uh, and then just some quick, some questions. Okay. So yeah. I started um, July 31st of last year and just did the report, which was a little, you know, like a 15 month report. Um, and I met with the select board in the fall and I think again in the winter. So they were updated through those seasons. And then COVID-19 hit and I've been in close contact with you guys because we've been working on projects together, which has been a lot of fun. Um, everything went well last year. Lots of participants in sports and good seasons. And um, then we have soccer started again this fall, um, doing it a little different, COVID safe soccer. Um, and we are just following up with what, what's going to happen over this coming winter, staying in touch with principals and ski resorts and all the different athletic directors and stuff to figure out how to, how to plan fun stuff. Um, and then we've been working on some side projects, getting more into the outdoor rec side of um, the community, trying to increase our offerings there and increase our trail systems and things like that in the community. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Any board member questions? I'd like to say I thought the report was really, really wonderful. I didn't realize how extensive our recreation activities were and you know how good it is to be a kid in Johnson. It's <laughs> awesome. There's a lot to do on well, regularly. We're working on alternatives. <laughs> I just, one thing I noticed on the report that I wanted to mention is the last sentence where you mentioned that you're using um, a number of your own personal tools and things for the job. And uh, I appreciate you bringing that up to us. And I, I think we need to work on that as a select board. Yeah, that and her money. Yeah, yeah it would be nice to sort the money side out. Yeah, I was trying to be graceful and not just <laughs> spell it right out, but yes, including your money, the bank account. Yeah, but Brian and I have been, you know, in discussions on that for the year, trying to figure a system out that would will work nicely and, and flow well and be tracked easily and all that. So it's yeah, in my, process. <laughs> my, my experience is you extend yourself, a person in your position, you extend yourself and all you can do is get into trouble, you know, so, so really sorting that out would be good. Yeah, doing wonderfully and and helping, you know, and it's no use not property to you for there to be punishment at some point. <laughs> thank you, Lisa, and thank for everything you've been doing doing this uh, COVID nineteen as well. Thank you. Any any further right, questions? Welcome. If not, I just want to say, yeah, I just want to. Everything that people are saying, it's, it is great to be a kid in Johnson. My kids can attest to that. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks to everyone who helps me. It's awesome. Thank you. Okay, I guess we're ready to move into Brian's report. Okay. We're about 15 month, minutes behind schedule. So pick up time where we can. Um, so first is the purchase of two trucks. So uh, this is planned for in our capital uh, capital equipment plan uh, that we have um, the uh, the single axle uh, smaller dump truck and one of our regular uh, tandem trucks both are are due for replacement. The single axle is a little bit. It is what has worn out a little faster than anticipated. Um, and so the tandem is, that one's moving up and the tandem's moving back a little bit to even them out. Uh, so the replacement will have for both trucks will happen next year. The wait list on equipment is long enough that if we want something for next summer, we need to order it now. Uh, but we won't actually be paying for these until sometime after July 1st of 2021. So it'll be the financial year 22. Um, 
Yeah, the two trucks we had planned was a uh, for the single axle. Uh, Brian, help me out. What was the single axle getting replaced with? Single axle was the HV five hundred seven. Yep. Uh, and we and should let's. I would like to deal with that separately because I, I think there's going to be more questions and I, it would be less confusing if we just had one truck out of the way and then we we're talking about two. Okay, right. let's start, start with that one then. Brian, why don't you go ahead and talk to that. Brian Krause. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's similar to what we have right now. It has a beefier rear end. Um, but basically it's the same size, um, same weight capacity, same, it's basically the same truck. It'll be for our salt, you know, our salt route on the pavement. It'll fill in. If we have a truck breakdown, it can sand, um, and plow the back roads as well. So it's, it's kind of an all purpose truck. So it carries our chloride tank in the summer. So we use it quite a bit. Um, and it's, I thought about going smaller, I thought about going bigger. Um, ideally, we would, we would use a four wheel drive for getting up the hills when it's slippery with that truck, but we really don't, I'm not happy with the selections of the four wheel drives and we don't have the head space to get it in our shop. We'd have to park it down below. Um, so this is really the truck. It's pretty much, it's what's, it's this year's or next year's identical version of what we have now with the exception that the, the rear end stronger. Okay, any board members got questions? And this is the one we pulled in a year because it's uh, wearing right. out quicker. Yeah, yeah the, the, yeah, I, I don't know if it's exactly because of the salt or what the use is, but um, yeah, uh, this truck hit is wearing out faster than anticipated the current version of this truck is wearing out faster than anticipated. So we're looking at the same, the same, um, brand truck, the same. Yes. Are we obligated if future budgets don't pass or if, um, you know, we get into financial trouble, it, Things don't go to according to plan. Are we obligated to buy the truck? Yeah. I I don't know. That's a good question. I would assume so, but I I don't know. It's never come up. Yeah, well right. we, I don't think we've ever ordered a truck this early before before budget was approved. No, this is, to, to my knowledge, the earliest we've had to order something like this. Um, but yeah, it's, it, with the wait time, it would be you know, difficult. I would imagine, uh, I would imagine that there would be some kind of penalty for uh, us backing out of a, a deal, but I don't think we would be obligated to purchase the whole thing. The agreement that they have in front of us, uh, I don't see a penalty, but I do see the language. Uh, let's see. I would think that all manufacturers with, when they're dealing with municipalities are well aware that it's contingent upon uh, voter approval. We wouldn't be able to make any purchase without the uh, voter approval in March. Well, we do have statutory authority to buy equipment. True, we do. But um, typically we order them in the beginning of the year before our budget is approved. And right. it is contingent upon voter approval usually. Brian Krause. Yes. The uh, HV 507 does not have a trade in. Are we going to sell the old truck outright on a bid or how's that going to work? 
No, well, the trade incident be we covered at our last meeting. Uh, give me a second, and I'll pull it up. BS, you kind of stepped on BK. I apologize. You're right, I did. Well, while you folks are looking for that or whatever you're planning to come up with, I wouldn't be so so certain that 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 they're used to us. I expect that they uh, I expect that they don't have the used to us is probably that they don't have much of a problem because we follow through on towns follow through on the pur purchases. But I would think their contract. You know, if you want to know if you can get out of this contract, you, you better send it to your attorney. And I would suspect that you probably can't. And uh, your choice might be finding someone else that would be happy to buy it from you. Would you like Sorry, to skip to the next part? Right off, Mike. Um, if I recall correctly, uh, the trade-in on this was a little bit higher than anticipated. Uh, and the, the price of the vehicle was much higher than anticipated. Uh, but it, it was, uh, we covered it, I think, in our August meeting. August, okay. Yeah, and I, I don't see that number on mine either. I'm not sure why it's not there. <laughs> So basically, the 107.855 is with the trade-in. Yes. yes. Got it. I guess my question is, uh, maybe Brian Krause, you could explain what, what the rationale is on getting a truck, the same kind of truck that just crapped out on us early. <laughs> like. Is there just no other options or what's what what was what's the no, thing? Well, most of the problems were with the rear end and it just because because of our hills and whatnot um it just we went through a couple of rear ends and it, it just couldn't handle it so that's why we got the beefier rear end so it can handle it a little more you know like so it can handle what it's being asked to do i see so it's more of a, a model issue rather than the brand itself. More of a specking issue than the brand itself. Okay. And I did, I did look and I got a couple prices on some other ones. And then I just, I'd really like, it makes more sense to stick with one company. And when I, when I found out that I can get a BP rear end and that, then that kind of changed my mind because there's really, the truck hasn't been bad if, if I know it sounds silly, if you took that part out of it, the truck hasn't been a bad truck. It's okay. the brand that's given us trouble. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Sure. Is the board ready to go on to discussing the second truck? Yes. Okay. What, uh, well, did we decide something on the first truck? It, it sounds like uh, it's coming around to supporting it, but I'm, I'm probably going to look for a motion that includes one or both trucks. I got gotcha. you. Okay. <clears throat> so the next one, the next one I'm suggesting is the HX 620, um, and there's been some talk about the HV 613 which it's $10,000 cheaper and it's, it's a little fancier truck. It's a little cushier, um, but it's what we've been getting in the past. Um, 
and there's a few reasons why I do not want to go with that truck. One of them is resale value. The, the truck that I want is going to have a Cummins engine in it. The truck, the HB613 has a, a international engine in it. And they are hard, they are hard to sell because international for a lot, well, for a good period of time has had bad luck with their engines. And they say they've fixed all the problems. You know, have they? I don't know. But here's, I'll give you a good example. We're trading in our 2014 next year. So that'll make it eight years old. We're only getting $45,000 for that truck. The 09, which we traded in a couple years ago, was 12 years old. So it had more miles, more years. We got $55,000 for that. And I asked why we're getting so little for our 2014 one we're trading in. And the answer was because of that engine. Because the 09 had a Caterpillar engine in it, it did not have the international engine. And that's, that's the reason a, a, four, a truck four years older and that many more miles on it gets 10 more thousand dollars for a trade-in than our 14 is gonna get next year. And the HV613 does not come with anything but an international engine. So that's, that's one reason. I really like the HX. It's more of a construction vehicle. It's a little beefier. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that the HV does. Um, you know, you don't have as much room in the cab. It's, it's, it's more of a work truck. I feel that, and, and I feel it's gonna hold up better than the HVs have, which, which I think would be a, a very big plus. Um, yeah, I think the reliability of the Cummins engine, I don't think you could, well, I'm sure you could find somebody that says something bad about a Cummins engine, but they're very high, they're very good. Um, parts is another reason. We have two HXs in the fleet. The, inter, the, the parts interchangeability and, and less spare parts on the shelf is a, is a big bonus. There's, Another reason that I, I really want to go with this truck, because my plan to, and it may continue on when I'm gone or it may not, I don't know, but my plan to, to make winners easier for everybody with not being on call for six straight months. Like last year, it was working out really nice. Two guys had off every weekend. You had the ability to take vacation in the winter. Um, it was just a lot less stressful and, and people, the morale was so much better. With that type of system, where you're not asking everybody to come in all the time when you don't need them, people have to switch around trucks. And so when you get all three of the same trucks, all set up the same way, all the controls are the same way, the steering capabilities and, and characteristics are the same, the traction control is the same, it's easier for one person to go from one truck to the other in an ice storm and feel confident and comfortable that they can get through. Those are, those are my reasons for going with the H, HX. Well, Brian, it's hard to argue with you. Your recommendation is the 507 for the single axle and the 620 for the dual axle, correct? That is correct. Okay, what's the board's pleasure? Or do you have more questions? Since with regard to the question of what our budget is for next year, aren't we, uh, you know, don't we have some advantages because we have reserve funds for these in part, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And how much more comfortable should I feel because of that? I would say a lot more comfortable uh, that our, our reserve fund is doing well. These are uh, within our expected cost. Uh, you know, the one, the, the uh, larger one is $2,000 less than anticipated uh, net cost. And the other one is $1,000 more than anticipated. 
Uh, I will say that I'm going to have to rebalance that a little bit. Um, that the price of trucks is rising faster than I have estimated. What are we doing on warranties? Seeing as we've had those issues before, you know, do we buy a warranty? Do we not? Um, we we have been buying warranties. Um, I think they so the the 2019 that has a five year warranty on it. And I believe the 2020, I think they bumped it up. I'd have to double check, but I got the longest warranty that I could because I, I feel it makes sense. And with us, you know, trading them in sooner, the, the amount of time that we're paying for the repairs is greatly reduced. And you can see that in our, as, as this fleet gets, you know, updated and we get rid of some of these trucks that were really sucking up money. You can see that in the, in the repair costs. Thank you. Yes. And that the 2020 is a five year, I believe. Same as the 19. Brian Krause. Go ahead, yes. Mike. When uh, you get done here, are you going to be a truck salesman? <laughs> no, I'm not going to be a truck salesman. <laughs> you did a pretty good job on that HX. Well, it, it's because I believe that's I believe that's the best for the town. Okay. I, I believe, for for the reasons I stated, I, I believe it works best for the town. I was thinking of the XV because uh, I mean the uh, HV because it uh, was ten grand cheaper. But I see your point about the engine and everything else and the continuity which yeah. means a lot I, th I think it does and yes well the trade-in value if, if you get it back True. yeah that too. So i'll make a motion that we go with the hp we put on order the hb 507 and the hx 620. we have a motion do we have a second i'll second that a motion a second any more discussion Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. No opposed. Good. Uh, painting the school street bridge. I'm guessing this is a powerhouse. Yeah, this is the school street or powerhouse bridge. Um, we're having, we're continuing to have a number of graffiti problems on that bridge. It's been persistent and uh, a little difficult for us as we're cleaning them off. Um, my, I think it's time that we think about painting the bridge. You know, we could paint it a nice barn red, uh, and our maintenance would become much easier. Internal, external, both? I would say probably both. Uh, the internal is where we regularly have the most trouble. Uh, because it's easy for uh, vandals to reach. The external I'd also like to do because that's so difficult for us to reach. Um, you know, that that would, I th think and I hope, reduce our, the challenges that we face about maintenance on the outside. Uh, if we're painting it, we, you know, we would still have to mobilize everything for work over water and uh, paint and our possible chemical spills and everything else when we're working over the river, but um, with just a little bit of paint instead of uh, everything else, it's. I think it'll be a little bit easier to manage. When are you thinking about having this occur? Uh, I, I, I don't have an estimate from a painter yet, so I would imagine that this will probably occur, occur during the spring, uh, but if I could get if I could get somebody out this fall, I, I would. So we don't know what the cost would be yet. No, I really wanted to put this out there before I invested much of my time mm -hmm. in it. I, I imagine there's probably going to be some uh, sensitive feelings about a change, a visual change like that. Uh, uh, so I wanted to hear from the board and, and the community before I, I 
spent a lot of time on it. What's board's pleasure? You want to have him explore the cost? Mike? Generally, bridges are not painted on the inside. Covered yeah, bridges. Uh, that's pretty covered bridges. Common, no, la, la, the old times, I don't remember too many covered bridges being painted on the inside. It was all natural. Go to Cambridge and that one was restored properly and it's not painted on the inside. They spent a million dollars on that bridge. Cambridge Junction. It's natural wood on the inside. Yeah, so, I, I think that's a lot more common, uh, but it, it is easier to maintain painted wood. Cool. Uh, Matt? Well, on the outside, I don't think there's a huge problem with graffiti. I mean, I think there was one thing scrawled on it that I actually went and scrubbed off with a brush pretty easily. It took me 10 minutes. Um, OSHA wouldn't have approved. Um, but I didn't. Anyway, I just did that on my own. Uh, so I, the outside, I don't see a lot of graffiti, except on the abutments. The abutments are what's the real eyesore on the outside. And on the inside, I, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not against it, but I, I just thought that I'm not against painting necessarily, but I, um, I've had fine luck with a, with a stiff brush just brushing off uh graffiti on the inside of that bridge and the, i haven't spent a lot of time at it you could spend a lot of time at it but i've spent a half an hour here and there trying to do that and it's it's worked pretty well thanks that oh. the graffiti artists are faster than i am obviously <laughs> but i would like i would like to see the abutments cleaned up I don't know if they would be painted or if they would be power washed or what you know what would happen there, but I would imagine also painting the abutments because I think that will keep make it easier again easier to maintain in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's got a nice non-porous surface as a base, uh, then scrubbing gets it is very effective. Well, then it'd be a perfect canvas for them then. They'll. Yeah, uh, it, it's going to keep happening. We're going to have more graffiti. It's how difficult is it to remove the graffiti? Uh, and that's why that's why I'm interested in, in pursuing painting it, is that it'll make graffiti removal easier. None of these are Banksy or original? No. How do you know? I guess I don't know. I don't know who Banksy is. Uh, that's his whole mystique is we don't know who he is. He, he could be a Johnson resident. Um, I think that you might try Front Porch Forum seeing how much how important the covered bridges are and, and, and include, you know, and this one specifically, I think that we could outline the problem and, and say, what about doing painting the, uh, the concrete works? What about doing the inside? What about doing the outside? What do you, the citizens think of it, you know. We could be vetoed even though it, you know, even though we think it might be a good idea, you know, the public might be willing to live with it. Maybe we'd uh, recruit 10 Nat Kinney the seconds coming up to remove it or something. God forbid. <laughs> well, we absolutely cannot encourage anybody to work on on a bridge like that. That is dangerous and a safety concern. But to, uh, Doug's, the inside. To, to Doug's point about soliciting public input on Front Porch Forum, and and I still, I have no idea what we're talking. Are we talking uh, 1,000 or 20,000? Why don't we solicit um, input right now. We've got 23 people on that came to this meeting. Is there anyone in the public that, that you see, Brian, that would like to speak? Uh, I don't see anybody with a hand up. You might need to explain the hand thing, Brian. A lot of people came on after. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there is no chat. 
So if you are interested in speaking, um, you'll have to either raise your hand virtually or uh, if you camera, you can raise your hand that way. Uh, we had somebody on a phone earlier to raise your hand with, uh, from a phone, it is uh, star six nine. All right, and uh, Scott has, Scott or Kim have raised their hand. Yeah, it's, it's actually Scott. Um, just because I've been down this road before and people that don't have the technology to join on Zoom calls sometimes, I think Front Porch Forum is um, a nice way to input from this group would be great, but I'd love to have this get out a little bit further. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good idea, Front Porch Forum. I saw a hand up from Duncan. Was he hey, Duncan, to... uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes go ahead. Um, I think Front Porch Forum is a great idea. You're probably going to have a lot of opinions. My own opinion is I would not be that much in support of painting the bridge. That bridge, to my knowledge, was never painted historically. Uh, if we have to live with a little bit of graffiti, you know, so be it. it after a while, it becomes uh, part of the history of the bridge. So that's all I got. Thank you, Duncan. So what's the board's thoughts? You want to put this out on Front Porch Forum? Revisit? Yes. Right. <clears throat> Kyle? That's fine. D it's yep. Doug? Yeah. OK. All right. Uh, just to do a little bit more polling on this, I wrote a quick poll for folks that are interested in taking this. So we'll leave this open for a few minutes, uh, but I will take something to Front Porch Forum um, for a more complete and scientific result. Mike? Well, yeah, you're going to have to go a little bit further, you know, outside, inside, inside, outside. Yeah. You know, and be more specific. Right. Yeah, this was just something I could write in. Right. Okay. During our conversation in a, in a couple seconds. So uh, I'll write a more thorough poll to put up on Front Porch Forum. Brian, could we also get a cost estimate between now and the next time we discuss it, just so we know what we're talking about? Uh, I'll try and get a cost estimate. Um, again, I'm not sure how much time uh, I can try and put in a couple phone calls, but if there's no interest in it, I don't really want to devote much of my time to it. Uh, I don't think it's going to be very cheap. Yeah, I would estimate, you know, especially the, the outside of the bridge being quite expensive. Yeah. Because that probably is going to require some kind of staging to be built to, you know, so they can stand on it when they paint the outside. The inside should be relatively easy. But. Yeah. There's okay. going to have to be all kinds of cloth hanging from it to catch any of the overspray. And I mean, it, they'll turn it into a real big deal. Mm -hmm. All right. Revised facility use form. Uh, we are considerably behind. Uh, I'm going to suggest that we that this is something that we'd like to get updated, but especially heading into the winter, I think that you know, and with COVID and everything else, I think that this can wait till next meeting. Okay. With the board's Moving consent. On. Schedule for town employees flu shots. All right. So uh, very quickly, there's a lot of concern about. Uh, interactions between uh, the flu and COVID-19. Uh, symptoms can be similar, so it can be a little bit difficult. And, um, you know, vulnerabilities, if you're sick with one, that you might make getting sick with the other one that much more extreme. 
Uh, there's kind of a lot going on with these at the same time. Normally, we allow town employees, town and village employees, to get the flu shot here at the office uh, each year. That is currently delayed, uh, and there's no guarantee that that, even with its delay, there's no guarantee that it, they'll ever be able to send somebody to administer the flu shot on location. Um, so I think it's worth pursuing, um, you know, sending our people to Copley or to Cheslove. Uh, we'll do a little bit of work on uh, what an off-site facility will look like, but I, I'm interested in pursuing that, of finding an off-site facility that we can send our employees to to get the flu shot. What's the board's thoughts? It's strictly voluntary too, correct? Yes, I, I wouldn't want to get into pitfalls of requiring uh, a vaccine for, for our employees. Good. Is the board supportive of providing the time to go to Copley or somewhere that Brian can find for a flu shot? Yes. Like you said, typically it's done on site. If they want a flu shot, let them go get one wherever they well, can get it. Doug? I agree. Okay. Sounds like got the green light. Good. So, and we're clear that this, this would be like on our time, they can go get a flu shot. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm going to say, uh, you know, in Morrisville uh, yep. or Stowe. Uh, or Cambridge. Or Cambridge. Yeah, that's right. They've got the healthcare facility in Cambridge, too. So that's, that's a good, good ad. Uh, we had an employee joking that, you know, they'd see us next week that they'll go, uh, <laughs> you know. Colorado or something? Uh, Jamaica was, I think, the suggestion. Oh. <laughs> I think pharmacies are doing flu shots now, too. They are. Uh, it, it should be very easy to get a flu shot. It's just the... I imagine it's a staffing issue of that they that that's why we're not able to get somebody to come to us to give the flu shot. Mm -hmm. um, so my first thought is going to be: Are they doing a you know a clinic someplace where we can send people and we can send everybody at the same time on the same day? You know that would be my first choice. If that's not the case, uh, then yeah, we'll just send people kind of ad hoc to get a shot as soon as they can. It sounds Good. it's a stitch in time, you know? You, you will... Absolutely. Uh, I think this is a, yeah, will save us a lot of headache in the long run. Fire warden. All right. Uh, Gory Smith has uh, resigned as our town fire warden, or I should say he submitted his resignation. Uh, so the first thing the board needs to do is uh, whether they're going to accept his resignation or not. And I understood it's effective until the end of the year, unless we find a replacement earlier. Yes. Yeah, he's he's willing to stay as late as the new year um, while we search for a replacement. That's very good of him. Well, we really appreciate it. What's the board's pleasure on accepting Gordy's resignation? And then we'll need to discuss how we're gonna proceed. I uh, move that we accept his nomination and also uh, submit a letter for all of his 30, 40 years or how many years he's done it. Find out exactly and, and thank him for all of his service. I believe you said you meant uh, accept his resignation, not his uh, application. Nomination. I, I said application? Nomination. Nomination. Oh, okay. <laughs> Resignation. <laughs> well, second. We have a motion, a second. Any more discussion? And definitely we'd want that letter sent to thanking him for his 30 something years service. Yep. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, uh, as far as moving forward, we want to post this in our normal uh, 
openings, postings, and I believe we have more than one opening, don't we, that we need to post for? Uh, that's right. Our, we also need a, uh, we did accept Phil Wilson's resignation from our, I think we accepted Phil's resignation. No, we didn't. We didn't? Okay. I, I don't know if we ever got one, did we? I don't think, I don't know if he formally resigned or if he just moved. They just skipped town. Yeah. yeah. Went to Hardwick, right? Or Wolcott. Obviously, okay. obviously he can't serve as our uh, representative. Um, well, let's post for both. Yep, so I'll, I'll search for volunteers for both. Okay, in our normal search fashion. Yep. Is there in, any other openings that we had? Just those two. Uh, it would be nice to get an additional constable. Huh? Might as well post for it at the same time then. Okay. Anybody got anything further on that? If not, the Historical Society request. And I believe uh, Duncan's. You've got a letter from uh, Dixie May. Uh, detailing a couple different issues. Uh, so why don't we take them in two parts? Uh, the first that I think is going to be a little bit easier to handle is a uh, question about, uh, it looks like a couple of items that we had uh, agreed to share the cost on, we might not have properly split the cost. Uh, when it actually came time to play, pay the invoice. Uh, so was, what was that work done? Uh, let's see, uh, installing a heater in the carriage room uh, below Donnie's apartment. We have had freezing in that space that has affected both the historical society and uh, uh, Donnie's apartment, which is you know, owned and operated okay. by the town. Yeah. And we agreed to split that cost. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, I just as a point, I, I, I was looking back uh, at meeting minutes because I didn't recall that. Um, I think the, and Duncan, I'm sure will um, maybe be able to shed some light on it. But at, at the June, the last time we talked about this was at the June 17th meeting of 2019. Um, and it, reading the meeting minutes, it seems to me that we specifically did not agree to share costs on that. Um, and I can, I can read from that if, if it would help, but um, this, my, my takeaway is I don't believe that we agreed to share costs on that. I, I believe that we specifically said we didn't have, feel that we had money at the time to do that. Again, that was a year ago, our position might change this year, but when we last discussed it, we said, the town didn't feel that we had money to, uh, to share cost on that. Can I comment on that? Yes, please, Duncan. Uh, Matt, I believe you're right. Um, I was not at that meeting, but I think Dean West was. Um, Dean, I think, went away from the meeting with the understanding that you had not agreed to share the cost on the heater, but that you would, that it wasn't a closed door, that you would be willing to revisit the issue or, or entertain it at some point in the future. So our, our thought process in this letter was, would you be willing to reconsider in light of where you are? And we didn't know where you were financially. So, so I think Matt is right. Um, but Dean's recollection was that it wasn't necessarily a solid no, it was a no, not tonight. It was, I, I think that's, I think that's, yeah, I, I think we're agreeing on that. It, it, the, and I, I, again, I can pick through the meeting minutes precisely, but I believe the comment that Eric made was come back to us next year and we might have more money then. So I, I think that's. We're, we're basically agree there. 
would it would it help to know what the cost of that was? Yeah. Yes. So our estimate was for eighteen hundred dollars. It looks to me, um, from looking at the detailed transactions, Rosemary can uh, verify this, but it looks to me like we actually spent um, one thousand seven hundred and seventy-six dollars. Um, if the board were to entertain uh, a contribution towards that of 50%, if I'm doing the math right, it looks like 888 bucks. Okay, so that's the first question before the board. And that was the only item? Also, a uh, a knockbox uh, for the keys for the building. Some of which are the keys for the historical society parts, but it also includes uh, keys for the town parts. So okay. uh, they have asked if we would share in the cost of that. Uh, it was. Yeah. $162, so 50% share would be, uh, what's that? 181. Quick comment. Go ahead. Um, just to be clear, uh, if the board's intent in mentioning that in the letter was not necessarily to ask for a 50% cost share, just to let you know that that was an expense that, that we incurred, which does benefit the town because you have keys in the knots box for, for the apartment. So I, I don't, the, my recollection of the intent of the board, historical society board was that we were not specifically requesting a 50% cost share on that item. Okay. So what's the board's pleasure? You want to take them separately or do you want to Make it one. No, well, it's not really intended to be a request. Uh, mm -hmm. Then that's just my misinterpretation of, of their letter. So I, I'd be interested to hear what, what Doug and Eric have to say. You, you served on the committee um, that formed the memorandum of understanding between us and, and how does this fit into that? Well, go ahead here. I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> I, I, I'm having a hard time with fitting this in because that was uh, uh, we were we talked about um, benefits, you know, for improvements. I think there is a section in that that dealt with improvements, you know. Um, I, I hate to show my ignorance, but I, I don't know what a Knox box is. And it does seem to me they're requesting, um, I, I, I think the question might be, I think it's extraneous to our agreement now, you know, I, I really do. Um, and uh, it probably predated our, this comeback stuff that, Eric misspoke about back in 2019, may have predated this. <laughs> um, uh, I, for me, it's a question of, of budget and fairness, you know, fairness to them and, and, and our budget, you know, are, are we in any different place than now than we were then? Uh, um, you know, I, what about the, Hundred and thirteen thousand dollars. You know where does that fit in that that Rosemary was talking about? You know, the Knox box is a box that's usually located somewhere on the outside of the building, and it has all of the keys to get in all of the different rooms or or different apartments, what have you. And it's a box that the fire department has a key to and access. So saving us from having our door chopped down with an ax. They go to the Knox box, open it up with their key, grab one of the keys to open whatever door they need to get in. There's quite a few businesses and uh, large buildings that have these on them. 
all around the town. So that really is a, a benefit to we, the owner. Yes. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. I, I would look at this from what do we have in our budget and where are we? And it doesn't make sense uh, to, to make contributions for this based on our, our budget. Well, roughly speaking, if we went 50% on both, we're talking about $1,000, maybe a little bit north of it. I offer a quick comment. Go ahead, Duncan. So, um, again, to be clear, um, if, if you want to, if you want to contribute 50% on the not spots, I guess we wouldn't refuse it, but we're not asking for that. Um, so if you want to take that out of the equation, I think you can feel free to do so based on my understanding of, of our board discussion. With regard to the heat in the carriage room, I think the benefit to the town um, is, you know, perhaps a little, um, a little less direct than the agreement that we executed um, describes or talks about. But having said that, the advantage of having the room heated is that the piping, the water and sewer pipes from Donnie's apartment go through that space um, I don't know what the cost to unthaw those was a couple of years ago, um, but having that space heated, which the historical society is, is paying for the cost of the heating, um, would benefit the town by Donnie's apartment sewer and water lines not freezing in the future. Um, so that's, again, like the, the benefit is a little less direct, I think, perhaps than the agreement that we signed, but it's nonetheless a valid um, argument on our part. And I wouldn't want to presume to know what the cash position of the overall budget is. And in that regard, I certainly understand if that's not feasible. Mike? Question for Doug. So it's your uh, belief that we're not responsible for half of that heater. Correct. Is that what I heard from you? I think that our responsibility, not under the agreement that we had, but I think our responsibility is based on their coming to us in that, was it June 2019? And, and we said, uh, no, but come back. I think that's where they're coming back. You know, I think it's from there that that's just flows. But you still didn't quite answer my question. Do you think we should pay it or not? I don't know what our budget position is. Okay. So this would come out of our building reserve fund, presumably, correct? I would imagine so. Last year, our building reserve fund, or the last few years, our building reserve fund has been, uh, uh, we've tapped into it more than usual because of the, uh, more than expected because of the, the repairs to the municipal building. Presumably, we don't, have that this year we do have a budget surplus of thirteen thousand dollars it looks like um, so maybe things aren't quite as tight as they were last year i know that doesn't help anything <laughs> can i ask a question about the thirteen thousand dollar surplus 113. Does 113. Um, okay, so does that, I haven't seen any of the information that you guys have. So the, the other part of our request is that the surplus of the historical society in its budget, not the overall town budget, but in our budget, we show a surplus. We know in the current year that we're in right now, we have no income from um, Tuesday Night Live which is you know, about 5,000 um, bucks. So the other part of our request is rather than have the budget surplus of the historical society roll over into the reserve fund, which is what the capital budget um, envisions, 
we are requesting that instead of rolling it over into the capital reserve fund, we roll it over into the current budget year expenses so that it help, will help us offset the loss of revenue of things like two genetic lines. So can we keep those two separate? Because they're going to be two separate discussions, I would think. Yeah, I just, my question with regard to your overall surplus is, is our surplus included in that 113 number? Yes. 100, 100, it, it probably is, yes. Mike? So in a that question case, for uh, Duncan. Well, actually, to your question, Duncan, it may or may not be currently in that 113, but Rosemary has not finalized and she'll be putting money where it's supposed to go. So if it is in that 113, it would supposed to go into your reserve fund, um, but it may or may not still be there in, in our cash on hand. It, or it will not be our cash on hand. It's what we currently have for a surplus. Mike, go ahead. A question for Duncan. Go ahead. Duncan, uh, if we do as you ask about that surplus, will you cover the cost in whole of that heater or will you still want us to pay half? Um, speaking as a board member and knowing what the vote of the board was, my official position would have to be our, our official position was that we would request the board to consider um, the 50% the contribution. What, what you guys decide to do on that front, ultimately, I think is up to you and we will be satisfied with whatever your decision on that is. And I think as Doug said, that probably depends on what your year end cash position is. Um, and, you know, to Matt's point of where it would come out of, my, my take on that would be, it would be a contribution from your overall year end surplus, not necessarily um, the building's reserve fund. But that, again, that's up to you guys how you decide you want to deal with that. Um, so I, I'm probably not answering your question, but I guess our official request would be that you consider 50% and that you consider rolling over our year-end surplus as a, a, in effect cash on hand or, or current year budget expenses rather than rolling again to the reserve fund. Any other questions? Thanks, Duncan. So we've used our 15 minutes already on this uh, one item. Would this be better addressed when we have Rosemary coming back with all the figures and whatnot? And don't we usually decide how to allocate things? We used, we historically have, but as you recall last year, we rolled it into our budget and had the voters approve what we had, and it was to reduce our um, budget number, the amount to be raised by taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the reason that the board wanted to get this letter out there was to address the issue that you just talked about, um, that if and when you come to a decision on how you're going to allocate your year-end surpluses, our request would be that the Historical Society portion of that be um, not rolled into the reserve fund, but um, rolled into our overall budget, operating budget. So, to, so I, my answer to you as a Historical Society board member would be, yes, that's what we would hope you would do when you do your final considerations. Duncan, you don't, this heater that you, you're hoping to install, you don't need that right away for this winter? It's in. It's in. It's in. It's installed, and the, uh, the costs that I have are seven, 
we, we had an estimate of 1,800. Um, and I, it looks to me like we had two bills of 926 and 850 from Barnes Energy. Um, so it was in last year. It was, it was operating last year um, during the heating season, and it will be operating this year during the heating season, which will certainly have the impact or effect. And we also did some insulating in the building, um, which will have the impact of preventing future freeze-ups of the apartment above the carriage room. Right. Uh, Duncan, uh, what do you keep the temperature at out there? It's fairly minimal, um, Mike. I think between 45 and 50, maybe. It's probably the lowest setting that we can, um, you know, keep. But we're not occupying the space, so it's really just to keep it at a, you know, keep it above freezing. Well, I've been in there in the winter before the heater, uh, and it was really cold. Uh, I do see benefit for the building and the the infrastructure of that building. And so I, I would move that we pay uh, $888 toward it. We have a motion. Do we have a second? <clears throat> sure, I'll second it. We have a second. Any discussion? Are you, uh, are you looking for the reimbursement at all for the insulation? Doug, don't go that far. No, we, well, I'm sorry, Duncan, that's a question, not for me. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear or understand the question, Doug. I was wondering if you're looking for reimbursement for the insulation efforts. No, um, we, we did not feel that that was discussed before, and um, it was part of our overall uh, plan for renovations to that room much of which has been with volunteer um, volunteer effort. So no, we would not be looking for reimbursement on insulation. That question was also addressed to the June 17th meeting, so. Uh, so Any other? Go ahead, Kyle. I, so I'm confused, where's this money coming from? <laughs> it would, right now it would just come out of our general fund, operating fund for the year, and we will be deciding if if that hundred, uh, whatever we have for cash on hand is gets applied to this or it, it's about, well, 800 bucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or we could take it from our building reserve fund. Okay, so either way, the money is, is there and available. Yep. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. We are five minutes over on this one item and we still got to decide the uh, cash on hand from their operating budget or year end cash on hand. And That's their request. And I lost you, Nat. I lost you, Nat. Go ahead. I move that we roll over there excess funds into the current fiscal year. We got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we got a motion to second. Do we have any discussion? The only thing I would ask is what did the voters approve for their reserve funds? Does it obligate the uh, cash on hand at the end of the year must be put into their reserve fund? I believe that it does. So in light of that, I would rule that the motion and the second are invalid. So I'll, if I may, um, from the June 17th, 2019 meeting, um, what we did with their um, extra funds at the end of the last fiscal year was we earmarked it for certain projects, which I suppose we could technically say went into that reserve fund and then we earmarked it for these special projects. So I, I guess that would be the next move for the historical society would be to suggest to us where we would earmark these funds to out of their reserve fund, uh, <laughs> reserve budget. Do you see where that's um, going, Duncan? I do. Um, one of my, one of our big concerns was the lack of you know, we had 40, I think $4,500 or $5,000 uh, budgeted for 
revenue from Tuesday Night Live, um, that's gone. That's disappeared. So I can tell you right now um, that we're going to be operating on a, on a five thousand dollar deficit of revenue. Um, so if if you want to if you, if you're looking for a a way to consider earmarking some of the reserve funds, I guess my comeback would be to replace um, lost revenue from uh, Tuesday Night Live. So if, if that's something that could be entertained as part of Matt's motion and then ruled on uh, by the chair, we would certainly appreciate that. And I would also ask that you revisit the capital budget and get a legal opinion as to whether or not that's a hard and fast ruling that the money has to go into the reserve fund. I, I certainly wouldn't have interpreted it that way. But. Um, that is an understanding that I have, but that doesn't necessarily mean it is the way it must be. So I guess that might be uh, good to check with our attorney and see if if the money has to must go into the reserve fund or if we can allocate it somewhere else. So if we took no action on that tonight and and find these legal questions out, we could come back to it next month. If that I'm I'm sure that, that will work for the historical society, correct? Uh, it, it should. Again, our you know our biggest immediate concern was the loss of revenue from Tuesday Night Live, which is a fairly large hole in our overall revenue um, budget projections. Okay. So, with the board's pleasure, we'll have Brian check into that and see if we can uh, allocate that money into their current year's budget. That's good. Good. Thanks, okay. Uh, washing yeah. machine. Uh, we had a similar question that might be helpful to answer at the same time uh, from Conservation Commission. So uh, okay. with the chair's permission, I'm going to detour into that very quickly. Okay, go ahead. Um, so Lois had Lois, uh, as a representative for the Conservation Commission, had asked about the year-end balance and uh, the um, project that we approved for the uh, Handicap Accessible Trail at Beard Recreation Park. Um, they had requested to use $2,000 of the Conservation Commission funds at the end of the year. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't answer that at the time, Lois. I believe my understanding uh, from a discussion that we had, uh, we were outside, I don't remember the date of it though, but we were on the, the patio. Um, I believe that you are, you do have approval to use that money, that that was uh, funds that were committed for a project that began uh, below, before July 1st. Uh, and Lois, I'm going to ask you to unmute if you have any follow-up question or if the... or if the board has a question. You there, Lois? Uh, looks like she might be having a little bit of trouble unmuting herself. Oh. oh, she did for a second. Okay, let's try again. Okay, you there, Lois? Okay. Hi. Hey. It came up and said the host wasn't allowing it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're allowing it now. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, just to, to recenter us, I believe that you 
that you're using this funds for a project that was committed to before July 1st. So I don't think that these are funds that are even really coming out of your surplus. I think this is uh, your, uh, just a your funds that were spent uh, in the last financial year. Um, just haven't all, you know, the project just wasn't completed yet. Unless but, these but, are additional funds that I wasn't aware of. No, no, they're not additional funds. Um, but like the historical society, I was wanting to make sure that those mon funds didn't get removed at the end of this year because they're unspent for, for last year. And I don't, I'm looking for something that's a guarantee for that. Uh, if, I, if I understand this correctly, and Rosemary probably can correct me, but uh, if it's dedicated funding, it can go across a fiscal year into the next one. That's been our interpretation is that funds that are committed to a project, if the project starts, that you can finish that project. Rosemary? That's the way I understand it also. Okay, so the uh, Conservation Commission's uh, money should be safe. Yes. Okay, we, we had committed as a board that money back in June. So that's enough to make it official? Yes. Okay. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're onto the washing machine. Uh, Donna has a question, so oh, I'm gonna unmute okay. Donna here. Okay, Donna, go ahead. Oh, back on the uh, the last item, I, I didn't feel like you guys actually ever voted on the, um, the first thing that you talked about, whether you got, were going to uh, pay half on the, um, on the heater, you had a motion. Did I just miss when you voted on it or did you forget? Did, did we, we vote? Yes, we did. Okay. Really? Yeah. All right, if you think you did, then I guess I'll, I'll <laughs> say you did. I believe I made the motion and I seconded it and then we voted. We all, it was unanimous, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, because right, right after that, Kyle asked where the money was coming from. Did you ask that question after you voted or before? I thought I, thought I did that during discussion. Yeah, I believe you did. It was right after that yeah, we took it. the vote. Hmm. Well, I, I guess I can watch the video later. What, what if I watch the video and it turns out that you didn't really vote? Are you, are you guys really 100% sure you did and I just missed it? Would we like to take another vote just to make sure? The question was we voted on what? <laughs> on the $888. <laughs> we voted on that. Yeah, we voted on half of the heater. I, yeah. I, talk, I asked a question to uh, Duncan about, uh, you know, the heat in there and what it, the temperature he kept it at. I mentioned that I had been in there before. The heater was put in there and it was like zero outside and it was zero inside, but I didn't go that far to, to break it down, but I did say it was cold in there. But do you and remember I did say it was value and I made, made the motion. You yeah. made and, the motion. And I seconded. And yes, she does not contest that. She's contesting that, did we vote? Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. Well, we can vote again if you'd like, Mr. Chairman. We don't have to. Okay. It sounds like everybody remembers it, Donna. Okay. Thank you for asking. <laughs> we, must, we must be spellbinding. <laughs> the one we did not or something, Doug. <laughs> vote on was the motion to uh, transfer the money. Yes. I ruled the motion invalid. That's correct. Okay. Uh, washing machine. All right. So the tenant of uh, the Holcomb house in our front apartment. Uh, if you recall, the, wa the last washing machine broke down, we declined to replace it uh, and adjusted their rent accordingly. Um, the washing, they would like to put in their own washing machine. 
Uh, they gave me a model number. They're going to use the installers from Sears and purchase a new washer and dryer. Um, and would like to install it, uh, have it installed in the apartment. Mike? The reason we didn't uh, replace that, as we all know, is to try to mitigate or to stop any more water damage to the first floor by any kind of problem. And so uh, we shouldn't go forward with this because all we will be doing is opening up another can of worms. Anyone else? Not seeing any comments. Is there a yeah? Everything be installed so that they're uh, you know almost foolproof. Um, I guess it depends on the fool. Um. I've delivered hundreds of them, so I may qualify. No, no, it, it's they can be installed. You know, if they're if they're installed competently, and there's every reason to believe that these installers, that they're professional installers, would do a good job of it. Uh, that uh, as long as it's under normal use, it'll be fine. I'm trying to remember, Mike. Is that? I don't remember it being the wa the washer and dryer being the the problem, but. I think oh. it was the actual washer and dryer unit that was the problem, uh, and was the the root of it. And we declined rather than repairing the washer and dryer uh, because we were concerned that the that we it was the fault of the washer and dryer, but we weren't alerted in what we felt was a really timely fashion to there being a problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, that we declined to replace them or repair it, that we just closed it off. Okay. I wonder what the historical society would think of this would be my first question, the, they being the recipients of the damage. And the second thing is, can they get insurance for it? Not, they not being the historical society, but tenants to insuring the damage to property below. Uh, uh, Duncan. Losing Duncan's raising his hand for a comment. If we, Doug, I, I assume your comment, you were inviting the Historical Society for, to weigh in. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute Duncan. Um, I probably can't speak for the entire Historical Society, but um, I think we would have certainly some concerns about damage to artifacts if there were a major leak. Um, certainly if it were a brand new machine, the likelihood of that is probably less. Um, the, the other thing that did come up at our last board meeting though, and I, I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of it, we're under the understanding that there's been a change of tenants um, in the upstairs apartment and we just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that and that the lease agreement was modified to reflect a change in the um, occupancy of the unit. Yes, that was, uh, that change was made when the tenants renewed this year. So it, it is one carryover tenant and one new tenant. Personally, I, I would not have a problem if they wanted to install this unit using a professional um, installer. Um, and especially uh, during a pandemic, uh, I would certainly, if I were renting, would not want to be using any, um, any laundromats. If I'm the only one, then we leave it there. Well, I've not seen a motion, so we're still in discussion. Doug? 
Yeah, I, I'm with Nat on that. I mean, I think of how many apartments there are lined up one on top of the other that all have these type of items. Uh, I think that we should uh, ask them about insurance and that uh, if they have a professional installer uh, in new machines, uh, I, I think we could it be reasonable to let them use it. Okay. I mean, I think we would need to assume that our own insurance would would cover it um, any any problems. But what do you say, Nat? I don't know. I would I would think that our own insurance we would want to make sure that our own insurance would cover it and not leave it up to the tenant. But you know, yes. so, let's just get this over with. I'll I'll make a motion that we um, give permission for. Uh, the tenants in the upstairs floor department to uh, install a washing machine using a professional installer. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. So we'll take a roll call. Doug, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Mike, how do you vote? Nay. Kyle, how do you vote? Yay. Nat, how do you vote? Yes. And the chair votes affirmative as well. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, the next item is the posting for Racial Justice Committee. We've got 45 minutes allotted for this. That'll put us to nine. 45, I'm sure we would want to give a certain amount of time for public comment, but I'll open it up first for board comments and maybe Brian can update us. I believe the trustees took up our uh, mission statement that we had come up with. That's how I understand, that's how I understand it, that the, the, the mission was I believe passed without modification. Um, so the, the next piece for our board is to seek volunteers. Uh, the, in the, um, excuse me, in your packet is a draft notice seeking volunteers. Uh, so this would be what I would post on Facebook and Front Porch Forum, et cetera. Uh, the only change being made to this between here and posting, uh, you can see there is one part that says insert link here, which you know we'll insert once we have this approved. Yeah. What page is that? <laughs> uh, that is last page, page fifty-two, the last page. Okay, last page. No wonder I'm taking forever to get there. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Any comments? Yeah. Nat. Um, I feel like we've gotten a lot of public input on this issue and I've done my best to listen closely. Um, and I feel like I've done what I can do to make my views clear. I feel like we've all had that opportunity. Um, I prefer that we not delay anymore. Um, so with that, I make a motion that we post the town's three members on the Racial Justice Committee, mirroring the language the village used to post their opening and that we do so on Front Porch Forum and the town website. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have a discussion? Mike got it. What's that, Doug? Michael. Beat yes. Understood. Any discussion? And do we have the wording? When you're ready. Do you have the wording of what the village posted? No, I, I don't have that. Is that the one I read? That's the one you read into the minute. Okay, got it. So, if there's no board discussion, I'll open it up to the public. But I'd rather go ahead, Kyle. Thanks. Um. Yeah, so I guess I'll make my little speech like Matt did. Um, and I, yeah, 
respect what you're saying, Nat. Um, I, I feel like this, um, I, I personally really like what's presented in front of us um, by Brian. I think it's, um, I think it speaks to the mission. I think it helps. Um, I know when I'm looking to be on a committee or a board, it's um, the more clarity about what I'm actually getting involved in is better. Um, so I feel like more is better than less in this case. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think it's just very important to be to be clear about what we're what we're the the um, the work that we're looking for these people that want to be on this committee to do. So um, I I I yeah I I I, I would prefer um, this this uh, this version. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I just want to make sure I understand. By this version, we did approve that at our last meeting, did we not? That are we talking about the same thing? No, the the one in front of you was not approved at our last meeting. Uh, it was presented very similar to this, and we declined to take it up until this meeting. We wanted the uh, village to have an opportunity to look at what we came up for a mission statement first. Right. Okay, so there's two. In my mind, there were two different issues. There's the posting, and then there's this this um, mission statement or guiding statement, um, and they're both fine to me. Um, this, yeah, this is the this is the um, the soliciting volunteers. That's what I'm speaking about. Is that what you're speaking about, Nat? <laughs> I'm talking about a solicitation of volunteers. Yes, I was talking about using the language that the village used. Um, I'd be open to using the language that's on the last page of our select board packet as well. Okay. Your motion indicated the village language. Are you going to withdraw your motion? What did the village do? The village did what they did and then they approved, they adopted this document last week. Is that what happened? They did not adopt this document, uh, but they adopted the mission statement. It's not a mission statement, but a kind of our directive on where we saw the mission going. Where is that, Brian? I can pull up a copy of that. Uh, that the last, that's not the last page of That's our not the last page here that was not in your packet this week uh, because it was something that we had approved at our last meeting uh, and the village also approved it so it's been we had approved it contingent on the village approving it and they approved it without change uh, so, somehow i lost track of that document Apologies, I'm looking for this. Basically, as I recall, it was a our understanding of the joint meeting and what we came up with for a mission statement. And we, like uh, Brian said, we voted contingent upon the village trustees also affirming that that was their understanding. Yeah. And the purpose of tonight right now is what the wording will be, how, how we're gonna post it for the soliciting of candidates for the town site. Okay. The, um, did if you, it helps, I do have that okay. pulled up.
So this is the charge that both boards have approved. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, then the village has sought volunteers and we have not yet. And, and Eric read the solicitation um, at, in the meeting of September 8th, and it's on page four of, of the, the draft meeting minutes for that. And so with your motion, what you are doing is by referring to the solicitation of the village, you are moving to use the same language I presume substituting uh, the town of Johnson. Uh, well, it says, here's what it says. Members sought for the Johnson Racial Justice Committee. The Village of Johnson Board of Trustees and the Town of Johnson Select Board have voted to form a Racial Justice Committee, committee for Johnson. Each board will appoint three members to the committee. Therefore, the village is seeking letters of interest from village residents who would like to be considered for an appointment to the committee. If you would like to be considered for one of the three committee appointments by the village trustees, please submit a letter of interest to Meredith Dolan Village Manor, Village Manager. And uh, there were instructions for submitting letters by mail, email, or using the Dropbox by Friday, October 2nd, 2020. The notice also said, if you are not a village resident, but you are a town Johnson resident interested in the committee, please contact the town administrator Brian's story, and then it gave Brian's address. So that's what Eric read into the minutes of, of September 8th. Thank you. So I, I feel that um, I'm comfortable with the motion I made. Now okay. you said very comfortable or uncomfortable? Com comfortable. comfortable. Um, knowing that we have this other document that we've already approved standing behind it. Okay, any other discussion from board members before we open it up to the public? It would be my understanding that where appropriate, we would substitute the town of Johnson and addresses, you know, for the town of Johnson in this. Yeah, I think that would be an assumption. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mike. But, you know, Nat made a motion, I seconded it, but, you know, with Nat's permission, uh, couldn't we have uh, some kind of uh, maybe an addendum to it and just say good candidates should have applicable skills and experience including and just kind of uh, stick that in with it. But we could also mirror the village, but this is kind of what we're all looking for, isn't it? There is a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, you're certainly able to make a motion to amend. If you wanted to put something additional language in here or take language out. Currently the motion that's on the floor and the second is it, what it's, is being displayed right now. I make a motion that we amend it uh, to mirror the village uh, and to also have a, uh, a link uh, to this here that this is what we are looking for. To the mission statement? To what we have in front of us right here. An articulated commitment to racial and social justice and equality, be familiar with the relationship of dominant cultures and just have that and, and to let people know exactly what we're, we're trying to look for. I guess it kind of uh, tidies things up a little bit better. So your motion would be to add that at the end of this statement that the village put out? Yes, and just say good candidates should have applicable skills and experience including and then it would be linked to what you're referring to. This would be linked to the original one, yes. 
with the village. Okay. We have a motion for an amendment. Is there a second? Does that, Kyle, does that assuage your concerns or address your concerns? Uh, um, <clears throat> it's getting, I mean, it's, I, yeah, I would say it is closer. I, I guess I would then argue, why don't we just, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> it feels a little, a little um, clunky. Um, I, I, I guess for me, like, like I just said, I think the clearer we can be at the onset of what we're looking for, the, the, the um, more transparency there is to the folks that are applying and also hopefully will be less work for us in the end because only people that are really on board with the work will be applying, you know? Um, so there won't be any, you know, miscommunication there. Um, I just felt my, my um, concerns with what the village wrote was just that it was so vague and that just, that um, could, could, you know, could be problematic down the line. I just feel like if we are, the clearer we are about what the, the you know, what we're looking for, the better. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. So we had a motion for an amendment. I did not hear a second. Lacking a second, the motion will die. And the motion dies. My thought on, on this communication issue is that if we have applicants, we can easily send them the mission statement, which would, uh, you know, certainly apprise them of what, that's what a mission statement is supposed to do. Um, I think the advantage of this is the, it's simple. Uh, it's parallel to what the, what the village did. And the village, uh, as I understood it by reading their minutes, is they were going to uh, submit questions to ask the people. You can, uh, if you want to know if the person applying has a, uh, um, who has applied is, is committed, and you can ask them about their articulated commitment to racial and social justice and equity, and that be con can considered in the the voting, or you could ask them if they're familiar with the relationship between dominant culture and marginalized communities. Um, I think that you will be doing, it will be perceived as being unfair in pre-selecting if you narrow the, the possible applicants who, can, who won't even get to an interview if they don't pass the litmus test of these two, two items. So, uh, there is uh, the municipal entities, the village and the town will be addressing this. They are, they are representative of symbolic power. What we really want and what I want out of this, you know, just for myself, is that, is that there be follow through. You know, we are, it was very clear that many people here figure that we cannot vote for them and these, this village, uh, this, this village and town community will not represent them. And certainly that will be the case. Uh, if, if, uh, if we give a litmus test as to who can apply and don't bother you if you're in, in another category, they at least ought to get an interview and ought, ought to be able to submit an application. Anyone else? Is the board ready to open it up for public comment? Okay, Brian, or wait, did Kyle, did you say something? I just said I am, I'm okay. ready. Brian, can you open it up for public? Yep, uh, Scott, I've got you up first. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Thanks, Brian. Um, I was wondering, it sounds like there's actually another document. Maybe I'm wrong and I misunderstood, but it would help if we could actually see what you're talking about. With some right. of this stuff, when you first started discussing it, it sounded like you had a document 
a recommendation that you had written up and everybody was looking at it, but I don't think the participants tonight saw it. Yeah, it was in Brian's package. Yeah. Um, Is it possible to have bring, that bring that it up, is Brian? Up, is it up on the screen right now or? No, it's uh -huh. not. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it was the last page of the packet and I'll put it up right now. Yeah, thanks. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. And that's the full thing? Yeah, this is the, well, I guess the, the, yeah, the only line that doesn't fit on the screen is just a link to, you know, come to the meeting and, and how to join the meeting. This uh, was that was a, all you needed, Scott? I thought there was, I, I, <clears throat> I know this one by heart by now. Yeah. <clears throat> but I thought there was another version that was being discussed. And if I'm, I'm wrong on that, I'm wrong. I don't think there was another version. There was a little bit of confusion about what document we were talking about, whether it was this one or the charge to create the committee. But this is the, uh, the, Solicitation for volunteers okay. that we've written. Yeah, uh, okay. I made a couple updates to it uh, since our last meeting, so it's not 100% the same one that we saw a month ago, but not much has changed. Yep, okay. All right, I don't want to take up any more time. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Scott. And uh, Cal, uh, can you unmute yourself, Cal? Yeah, hey gang. Um, just want to echo what Doug said, and I think uh, in spite of everyone's efforts to kind of narrow it down um, in writing, um, at this stage of the game, I think, uh, and I think at the village meeting, correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, you know, it was kind of like, let's get people in and uh, we'll narrow it down from there. So uh, thanks, guys. Thank you, Cal. Uh, that's all I've got. Don't remember if you want to speak uh, where you've got the action buttons on the participant screen. One of them is a raise hand. If you can click on that, uh, I'll be able to call on you. Okay, I see Jackie. Okay, unmute yourself, Jackie. Okay. Uh, hey, all, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I actually liked uh, Mike's idea about um, linking this document that, that's up on the screen right now, that the good candidates have, um, you know, applicable skills and experience with, blah, 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 blah. That's my opinion. Thank you. We have anyone else? That looks like it's it for public comment. I'm not seeing anybody else at this time. Okay, is the board prepared to vote? Yes. So, sorry, okay, where are we with the voting? <laughs> uh, we are voting on the original motion that Nat made basically mirroring the same language as the village, obviously replacing village with town. That's the motion on the floor. And if there's no more public comment, take it back to the board. Yeah. Can you take down that document, Brian? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, do you want a copy of the one that you're actually voting on right now? Or are you all pretty familiar with that language? That was the one that was highlighted in yellow. Yes. Correct. Okay. Any board members want to see it again? No. Is the board prepared to vote? Yes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And the motion passes. And we'll post that in our normal posting places. Yep, and I'll make the edits to, you know, that it's coming from us, not the village. Right. 
but otherwise I'll leave the language unchanged. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone. Uh, board retreat. All right, so I have a, a list of a couple of candidates who could serve as facilitator for this, uh, but the first, you know, and I'll pursue a little bit more detail with them, but uh, in particular, the first thing that we need to talk about is open meeting laws. Uh, Abby Friedman over at VLCT gave me a list of candidates that they had either used or uh, reviewed, um, but she also reminded me that this would fall under open meeting, uh, that if we were to discuss any business uh, or anything before the board, we would have to have this as an open meeting. And I think that it would be difficult uh, to have a frank and open discussion where we couldn't discuss anything that ever appeared before the board or might appear before the board. Um, I think that would make the discussion pretty difficult. Um, I think that this might be a little bit more valuable uh, once we can meet again in person you know, where you've got a better idea of kind of what's going on. Uh, you might have a different feel for the room and you might feel a little bit more comfortable at that time, but I think uh, a board retreat online, you know, fully recorded and shared online uh, would kind of defeat the purpose of a board retreat. Yep. Um, but if, if you're interested, I can pursue, keep pursuing this, get some cost estimates and uh, topics and facilitators lined up. This was something I asked Brian to do a little follow up on, see if we could potentially have a board retreat. Uh, in the years ago, uh, board retreats I participated in uh, was not open to the public. You didn't have to back then. Uh, I think it's very unfortunate. It would be very difficult for any of us to sit there and maybe share some thoughts or, or feelings on some of our meetings, how they've gone, uh, some of the issues we've had, knowing that uh, everyone in the public is going to be there with us and uh, being recorded. Um, unless there's another way to do it, I, I would not support uh, having a board retreat you know, for these reasons. I don't think it would be uh, beneficial in the way that I had hoped maybe it could be. And I guess it's an unfortunate thing of the open meeting law. And that's, that's why, that's where it's coming from. It's why Brian brought it tonight as I had asked him. But I'm, I'm certainly opening it up to any board members that would like to say something positive or, or against having a board retreat. I don't think we can even go to a baseball game together now, you know, <laughs> COVID-19. And it would be, I, I think it would be really good to reestablish some of our contact, which we've lost and, and, and there's, uh, but I don't know how to do it now. And doing it virtually never would amount to anything. Hopefully someday this will end and we'll get back to normal. Maybe we can all go to our, and get our COVID-19 shots together. Yeah, you can do it without me. <laughs> I sensed that earlier. Um, so yeah, I, I can, you know, I think it might be, even with open meetings, it might be worth revisiting this uh, in the future, but I think for right now, having to do it virtually, having to have open meetings, I think it all adds up to too, too much uh, and kind of really decreases the utility. Yep. Move on to number 10, Mr. Chairman. If there's no further comments, we'll right. move on. So okay. next one, uh, I do have a lot a whole lot of documentation on this one. Uh, well, we had a pretty big packet this month, so 
This is only another uh, 30 pages, so it's not that much, but I didn't send it along with everybody's packets. Uh, there is, they're going to be doing some slope stabilization uh, across from NATO's gravel pit. Um, well, really a little bit further east from there. Um, we don't have a date on when this is going to begin exactly yet. The construction that you've seen right now is for a water main uh, across Route 15 and doesn't have anything to do with, with this particular project. But this is coming up. I don't have a date on it yet, but if anybody's interested, I do have details on uh, what this is going to look like. They're not signaling the need for a detour. Um, so I don't think it's going to be a huge impact, but uh, it's a fairly large project. So I am imagining that what traffic control is going to look like is that we'll be down to one lane for uh, a decently significant amount of time on Route 15. They're going to cut the corner by the pit and straighten it up a little bit? I don't think they're cutting the corner on that. I think what they're really working on is uh, reinforcement of the, the slope. Oh yeah, that's that's kicking out pretty bad over the years. Yeah, you can see where they had to patch it, where the road had cracked near the edge. Yeah, uh, they, I think that's their target area. They'd be better off to get some land from NATO and cut that corner and make it a little straighter. Yeah. And get uh, away from that. Accidents in that area too, so uh, you know, better sight lines would help quite a bit. So that's above my pay grade. Yeah. Yep, I think that's above all ours. Yeah, yeah, their decision is, is just focusing on slope stabilization. And you don't have a date for this? No, I don't have a date for it yet. <laughs> that's yeah. good. If anybody's interested, uh, I can send along the design documents. Please send those to me, would you? Brother? Sure. Thank you. We should speak to the highway department and tell them that they're interested in doing slope stabilization there. They ought to consider it on the Guyon River where the house is going to go in. Yes. That, uh, yeah, as much as the, this is an area of need, that is very, very much kind of obviously an area of need right now. That, uh, yeah, they, they are, they have been made aware of the erosion it's causing, but yeah, they have declined to take action on it so far. But this is a project uh, that I worked, this one I worked pretty closely with our Transportation Advisory Committee in the county uh, with assistance from LCPC to uh, kind of ma uh, maintain some attention on this, uh, especially after a year or two ago when we saw some cracking on the edge of the pavement. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that, Doug. I think the state's going to move on that. I think that will take care of itself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But <laughs> no, I think well, the state was going to, going to remove that, that house. Okay. Well, you seem to know, have some insider information. I'll let it, leave. I'll let it uh, I don't think we need to worry about it. He but, never disposes uh, his sources. <laughs> I didn't hear you, Doug. <laughs> he never his sources. So we don't know if they're like the steel report or what. I think we got plenty of derelict buildings in the community, but that's one I don't think we have to worry about. It's going to take care of itself. Yeah. Only and I are just like this. Yeah. So we don't want it to take care of itself. No, it's. I think the, the state, state will, will take, take care, care of, of it. it. Yes, or it if, it, if it goes in the river, A and R will be all over it. Yeah. Okay. All right. If we're all set with that, uh, you received the monthly update from the sheriff's department. And before we go to executive session, we had a couple other items. Uh, the VLCT voting. Yeah, our voting delegate for uh, the League of Cities and Towns uh, annual meeting. Okay. And did anybody express interest in doing that? I thought Doug said something about it. <laughs> he's he's in his office all the time. <laughs> he can, he's always watching TV in his office. Yeah. Anybody want to do it? No. No. <laughs> Kyle? 
Well, I actually was considering doing it, but I'm just worried it's not going to be done before the kids come home from school. I, I don't, the timing is a little tight for me. What time does it start? Uh, it's Nine. around one o'clock. Uh, give me a second and I'll look. Can we appoint an alt, uh, a, a voting member and an alternate? Uh, this is Doug know. Alternate Johnson. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. I don't well, know if we can appoint an alternate. I don't think so because they're going to be, they'll let in whoever they let in at the beginning. I see. Yeah, it's usually tied to your tickets. So it's not usually something that, uh, yeah, that doesn't but usually apply, but. Usually the major business is in the beginning. It's oh, really? Big, yeah, you're voting on all of the, uh, the league uh, policies. Yeah, you, you set the um, the priority projects and the uh, I forget what they call it, but what, you know they also serve as our lobbyist. So the, mm -hmm. you set the priorities as our lobbyist uh, at that meeting as well. You've done that for years, Eric, right? Oh yeah, yeah. it's. It'd be good for you, Kyle. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if you if you think that it's happened, uh, okay. I would just have to need to have to bow out early. I, I, Don't worry I, about it. Okay. It, when they had the early, it'll be fine. Yeah. When okay. they used to do these in person, people would leave before it was over because it usually okay. drags on into other business. Okay. All right, I'll do it. Good. Congratulations. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, recognition for Ray and Brian. Yes. Any uh, thoughts? Yeah, if anybody's got any ideas, uh, you know, we've done thank you letters, uh, we've thrown a party. You know, we've kind of got both planned for Ray. Uh, we don't have anything really official planned for Brian, but you know, I imagine we'll do something. Can we buy him a truck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ray is easy. It can be put off for some amount of time, but Brian is going to be leaving town. So it was something that had to be done within the next few weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot we can do under these circumstances, I don't think. No. Uh, some kind of a gift card or something of that nature. Yeah. We could give him, is he driving up to Washington State? I, I'm not sure. We can give him a miniature HX six twenty. <laughs> I was thinking of a one of those diecast models. I was thinking of a prepaid gas card. That would be good too. But he could look at that truck for the rest of his life, though. <laughs> I thought you'd want to give him a thirteen or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the six one three HV six one three. Yeah. No, I'll give him that six twenty. Because it's just a die-cast model. You don't have to pay much for that. Why don't we spend a little bit of time thinking about it and try to have something for our next meeting? Um, you know, it's a, it's a little bit easier for Ray because we can do a party, we can do other things. Uh, it's a little hard to give you know, a gas card or something to be pretty useful. Um, it might be nice to give him something a little more personal too, like a, if we can get a, you know, like a pocket knife that we can get stamped or, or something. Something really bulky and hard to move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a Bowie knife. Yeah. Uh, spider go. He's a deer hunter. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, we'll think on it. Yeah, Model 70 Winchester. Well, if he's a deer hunter, no wonder he's leaving Vermont. <laughs> okay, uh, and I didn't show any other items, unless anybody recalls one that I missed. Otherwise, I would entertain the motion. I would suggest we go to the executive session first for the employee evaluation, and then that will end the select board meeting, and then we can do the, uh, the Board of Health deliberation. And moving on to executive session uh, to discuss employee evaluation as allowed by 1BSA 313A3. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Uh, show us in executive session at 938. Okay.